First Samuel, the 30th chapter. I searched and I look and find that there is still nobody greater than you, God. My, my, my. First Samuel, the 30th chapter. If it's your custom here to stand, I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of the word of God. First Samuel 30, and I'm just going to read one verse in your hearing, and when you have it, say amen. First Samuel 30. If you're still looking, that means come on to Bible study. Amen. First Samuel 30. Let's read verse 6. David was now in great danger. Because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. Uh, and they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. But David found strength in the Lord his God. But David found some strength, y'all. Yeah, in the Lord his God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I promise if you say amen, I promise I'll be done in about 15 minutes. Amen. amen. Y'all real shady. <laughs> First Samuel, the 30th chapter and the 6th verse. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters and they began to talk of stoning him uh, but David found strength in the Lord his God I want to talk from the subject for the next 15 minutes I can get crunk all by myself I can get crunk y'all crunk c-r-u-n-k I ain't say drunk I said crunk y'all all by myself Everyone who is 25 years old and younger already knows what crunk means. Uh, and for those who don't, let me just give you a little history on this word. It's a popular slang term, Brother Pastor, that has been used by young people in the South for many years. But in the last couple of years, thanks to the music industry, crunk has become a word that is now spoken throughout the world. This word means to get pumped up or excited about something or someone that you support. It can also be a force of energy. Back when I used to watch Mad Sports on BET on Saturdays or uh, ESPN, the newscaster always asked the athletes being interviewed what song or artist they listened to before the game to get themselves crunk or pumped up, y'all. Some of uh, these answers were, I heard a little Chuck Brown, y'all. I heard a little some of that, y'all. Um, I heard, um, I think I heard one say uh, EU, y'all. Um, um, I heard one say uh, T.O.B. I heard one say uh, Jay-Z and Pharrell, y'all. Uh, and I heard some other hip-hop and uh, contemporary rap artists, y'all. But young people also use music to get crunk for their high school, middle school, and college sports teams, y'all. But today, just for about 15 minutes, I want to take you back in history to, to tell you about a man named David who got crunk all by himself. Well... Let me uh, give you a little background on today's message before we get into our main text, y'all. We read in chapter 15 of 1 Samuel uh, that, that, that Samuel, being led by the Lord, anointed Saul to be king of Israel. But one thing you have to know about Saul was that he was kind of a stuck up and a cocky person, y'all. And we all know that there is a difference uh, between being cocky and having confidence in oneself, y'all. That's why we all need at least one real person in, in our lives, y'all, that has our best interests at heart, y'all. That's why we need to listen to the voice of the Lord and let the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct our everyday lives. And so Saul got the big head, y'all, because, because, because he thought that he was better than God and didn't want to obey his commandments, y'all. And so as a result, God rejected him as king of Israel. God, in his wisdom, y'all, may even uh, keep us from receiving all of our blessings at one time to even get that same big head, y'all, that Saul got trying to take all the credit for the blessings that the Lord has given to each of us, y'all. 
He doesn't want us to walk around thinking that we're all of that in a bag of chips and saw dear y'all. That's why young people, God, God may want to see if you're going to praise him before he allows you to get your driver's license, y'all. Or are you going to praise him while you still ride that old metro bus or the big cheese bus to school, y'all. God wants to see if you're going to praise him before you get that old suburban, y'all. Are you going to praise him while you're driving your little hoopty car, y'all? Now I understand why the saints sing past me now, little gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. Because we all need to be humble to receive our blessings. But in chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, the Lord told Samuel to go and find and anoint a king to replace Saul. So Samuel followed the Lord's instructions and went to Jesse's house because the Lord told him that the new king was going to be one of his sons, y'all. Although uh, Jesse's son didn't look apart like the other king or his other brothers, uh, uh, you see, he was chosen, y'all. He was chosen. You see, young people, David didn't have uh, the new uh, Ralph Lawrence or the new... uh, Amount exchange or new Apollo, y'all, or new LeBron or George, y'all. He wasn't as popular as his older brother, y'all, but he did have favor from the Lord on his life, which is worth more than gold. And so today I've come to tell some righteous young person that if the Lord has to come down your street and knock on your door to bless you, he will, y'all. That's why I cannot get jealous when God blesses others, y'all. Who am I to tell God who to bless and who not to bless, y'all? That's the problem in the body of Christ, y'all. We got too many blessing haters, y'all. My pastor over there, Eddie, y'all, he teaches us to stay in our lane, y'all, and focus on using the gift that God has given to each of us. The problem is that we try to get in someone else's lane, y'all. Or take hold of someone else's gift, y'all. And have the nerve to get mad when it's not working for us, y'all. That's why I'm glad to know that what God has for me, it is for me and nobody and no one can take it away. Well, we must also know that there's a difference between being anointed by man and being anointed by God. When you are anointed by man, it's a job that many, many, many people can do. But when you are anointed by God, it's an assignment that only you can do, y'all. You see, young people, David was just doing his nine to five, y'all. He was working at his own camp. He was minding his own business, working at his farm, y'all, looking after his father's sheep before the Lord anointed him, y'all. That's why you should never allow anyone to put you down because of what neighborhood you come from or what school you go to, y'all. Remember not to let your haters get you down. And so David went on about his business, doing what was right uh, and righteous. And now the same father and brothers who put David down now had to bow down to him as king of Israel, y'all. I can hear David telling them back then you didn't want me and now I'm blessed above you all. This brings me to our text today in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter and the 6th verse. David's own family and friends, y'all, were captured and held as hostages by uh, the Amcalites. And so while all of this is going on, David's camp gets so mad at him that now they want to stone him to death, y'all. David is now very distressed and confused because, uh, because the very same people who said, I got your back, though, were now the ones who wanted to kill him, y'all. Which brings us to our first point on this morning. Don't stress out. Y'all tell your neighbor, don't stress out. 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 You don't want your glue to come out your tracks. Just don't stress out, y'all. Don't stress out. All right. Now, don't stress out. And so while all this drama is going on, y'all, David didn't lose any cool points, y'all. He stayed calm. God already said in his word that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Have you ever wondered why the people uh, uh, that always try to bring you down are not strangers, y'all? But your so-called friends, y'all. One of the problems is that we don't know uh, the difference between real friends and associates, y'all. I wish I had a church in here this morning. Some of us need to be more careful about who we hang out with, y'all. Listen, some of you girls don't need to be hanging around with crazy peaches or crazy uh, boo-boo kitty, y'all, because she crazy. And starts drama mess everywhere she goes, y'all. 
Some of you dudes don't need to be hanging around Big Red or Big Lucius, y'all, because he's one of the biggest drug dealers in town, y'all. Some of us need to get rid of some negative people in our lives and give them the godly benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent from one another, y'all. Some of us need to uh, delete some cell phone numbers uh, from our cell phones, y'all. Block some Instagrams, y'all. Some Snapchat, y'all. Some uh, Twitters, y'all. And tell some people, don't come by my house no more, yeah. I may be torn in between the two like Latoya's song said. But sometimes you gotta be like Fantasia and go ahead and free yourself, y'all. I tell them, look, you better go on and free yourself. I'm from Capitol Heights. Don't play with me. You better go on and free yourself. So David, so David didn't cuss his friends out like some people would, y'all. He knew as we were told in Ephesians, the sixth chapter uh, and the 13th verse, that when you've done all you can to stand on the word of God. All right, y'all been good this far. I'm on my second point. Tell God thank you. All right. My second point, pray and praise, y'all. Pray and praise. Pray and praise. Uh, and so David, uh, in the midst of his uh, persecution, prayed too and praise the Lord. Uh, and so David teaches us that if you want to be a true praiser, you praise the Lord no matter what you're going through, y'all. And as young people during the school year, you're going to have issues with family and friends and grades, among other things, y'all. That's why you must have your own personal relationship with the Lord through prayer and praise. Paraphrasing a Kanye West tune, y'all, I've come to tell you all today that God doesn't want any spiritual gold diggers, y'all. I have learned that when we pray, we elevate ourselves above the problem and, we'll, and we can see how really small it is in the comparison to the awesome resources of God. Uh, but not only must we pray, but we must also give God the praise. And when we pray to and praise God, regardless of our circumstances, y'all, we show the devil that no matter what we're going through, that we already have the victory. And so, uh, this morning, as I come to a close, uh, the first thing that I just wanted to remind you all is just don't stress out, y'all. Don't stress out. You look too good just not to stress out, y'all. Listen, the makeup ain't worth it. Don't stress out, y'all. The second thing is pray uh, and pray your way through, y'all. We go through storms and situations. Listen, we can't uh, uh, have a testimony if we don't go through a test, y'all. Be careful about who you uh, associate with, y'all. You're too anointed and appointed for such a time as this, y'all. Everybody ain't your friend. Everybody ain't your friend. So watch out, y'all. Watch out, y'all. Watch out. But as I come to a close, my last and final point is that I can get crunk all by myself. How many of you know that to get crunk, that you don't need uh, anyone to pump you up, y'all? Many of us have low self-esteem, but we need to tell ourselves that we are more than conquerors, y'all. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror and get crunk by saying that I may not have a body like Beyonce or LL Cool J, y'all. But I am a temple of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> I might not have money like P. Diddy, but I am rich according to his riches in glory. I may not be in 50 cents G unit, y'all, but I am a soldier in God. I wish I had a church this morning, y'all. I may not be sitting on 24s, but wherever my foot strays, y'all, I have dominion. My signature may not be worth millions, but my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, y'all. I may not look like Usher, Shaka Khan, or Evie, y'all, huh? but I am created in the image of the Almighty God. Daniel, uh, in the lion's den, uh, got crunk all by himself. Uh, he said the Lord, uh, he is able. Uh, the Hebrew boys uh, got crunk all by himself, uh, and they said he will deliver. Uh, Jeremiah uh, got crunk, he said. Uh, it's like fire shut up in my bones. 
But most of all, Jesus got crunk because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that one Sunday morning, while the world was sound asleep, that he got up with all power. I thought I was in the Baptist church, y'all. That he got up with all power in his hands. Good evening, Easter friendship, y'all. But I stopped by to tell you that you want to get crunk all by yourself. You don't need nobody. You don't need nobody. As long as you got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Do I have somebody in the house this morning that don't need nobody else? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he make your enemies your footstool, y'all? I feel like preaching, y'all. Is there anybody here who knows that he's able to do what he said he would do? He's going to fulfill every promise. Just get crunk and don't give up. Get crunk and don't give out. Get crunk and pray your way through. Remember, don't stress out. Remember, pray and praise. And after you've done that, you want to get crunk all by yourself. And I came to Jesus just as I was weary. Woman said, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. He walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy he shares as we tell me that none other has ever known. Is there anybody here who can give God some glory? In the house, is there anybody who can give God some Holy Ghost praise in the house? Say yeah, say yeah. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yeah, I tried him and I found out that he's more than enough for me. Forget about Kitty. Forget about Lucifer. As long as I got King Jesus, I can do this thing all by myself. If that's your testimony, I tell you right now to give God some praise. Open up your mouth and throw your head back. Get in the aisle. Holler. Scream. And give God glory. y'all since we're here y'all can we just take about 30 seconds y'all just to give god some glory y'all since we're here if you know that you can get crook all by yourself can we just give god some glory what the devil meant for evil god will turn around for your good yo is there anybody here who can just give God glory?
we can rest to our feet. If we can just rest to our feet. There might be somebody here. Excuse me, y'all. Just feel the Holy Ghost all in me, y'all. Excuse me, y'all. There might be somebody here this morning who does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. praises go up and blessings come down if you're in this place and you need a new shift in your life and you you may be in college and you're hanging with new friends but you forgot the friend that sticks closer than a brother you may need to renew your relationship with Jesus you may need to ask the Lord to come into your heart this morning now afternoon the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he Raised them from the dead. Now sits on the right hand of the Father interceding for you. It's enough to shout about by itself. You can step out of your seat and say, Lord, I want a new beginning. I want to be saved. If there's one, if there's one, is there one? We got a praise party waiting to celebrate for you. Is there one? Somebody need Christ today. You need a church home. Someone needs Christ today. Step out of your seats today. Step out of your seats. Our ministers are in the aisle. Keep that, keep that little bit, keep that going a little bit. Keep it, keep it.